I took a deep breath, forcing a smile as Elise walked into the backyard for our family barbecue. Edwin squeezed my hand, sensing my unease. It'll be fine, he whispered, though his eyes betrayed doubt. Elise plopped down on a lawn chair, not even glancing our way. The tension was palpable, like a thick fog smothering any warmth between us. I had tried so hard to connect with her, but she remained distant, her resentment towards me as impenetrable as a fortress wall. Elise, why don't you help your father with the grill? I suggested, hoping some father-daughter bonding might thaw the ice. She rolled her eyes, but begrudgingly stood up, grabbing a baseball bat lying nearby. As she swung it casually, I felt a pang of unease. Edwin chuckled nervously. Be careful with that, honey. In a split second, the bat slipped from her hands, hurtling straight towards me. I froze, my heart pounding, as it whistled past, missing me by inches. Edwin rushed over, his face pale. Elise, what were you thinking? It was an accident, she shrugged, not even apologizing. But as I met her cold, defiant stare, I knew better. This was no accident. It was a warning shot, a clear message that she wanted nothing to do with my efforts at family unity. The line had been drawn, and the battle lines were forming for an war I never wanted to fight. A few weeks after the barbecue incident, Edwin came home looking grim. I lost the Henderson account, he said, sinking into a chair. My heart sank. The Henderson tech firm was one of his biggest clients. How bad is it? I asked cautiously. Edwin sighed heavily. Pretty bad. Without their retainer, we're going to be seriously strapped for cash. He ran a hand through his graying hair. I don't know how we'll afford Elise's college next year. Speaking of the devil, Elise walked in right then. What about my college? She demanded. Finances are tight, Edwin explained warily. We may have to look at cheaper options. Elise's eyes narrowed to slits. You're not sending me to a crappy state school after all my hard work. Don't take that tone with your father, I chided, unable to stay silent. Big mistake. She whirled on me, venom dripping from her words. You're not my mother, so stay out of this. I recoiled, stung. Edwin shot me an apologetic look but didn't reprimand her outburst. As usual, the fragile truce held by walking on eggshells around Elise. Later that night, I approached Edwin tentatively. Look, I know money's tight, but let me help cover Elise's tuition. He shook his head adamantly. You've been generous enough. I can't let you pay for my daughter's education. Edwin, we're partners, I insisted. Your struggles are mine. Please, let me do this, for our family. He searched my eyes for a long moment before giving a reluctant nod. Okay, thank you, Marta. I smiled, hoping this olive branch might finally earn me some goodwill from Elise. Fat chance. The next day, she leveled me with a contemptuous glare when I told her the news about paying her tuition. I don't want your charity, she spat. I fought to keep my temper. It's not charity, Elise. We're family now, whether you like it or not. A cruel smirk twisted her lips. You think throwing money around makes you part of this family? You'll never be anything more than Dad's little sugar baby. White-hot rage lanced through me at her vile insinuation. Taking a deep breath, I spoke slowly through gritted teeth. You'd better watch yourself, young lady. Elise simply laughed derisively and stormed off, leaving me shaking with barely contained fury. Her escalating vitriol showed she had absolutely no intention of letting me into her life. If anything, she seemed bent on tearing our family apart seam by seam. Well, two could play at that game. I was done being the punching bag. If she insisted on making an enemy of me, I would meet her attacks with equal force. That spoiled little brat had no idea what she was in for. A few weeks later, Edwin and I hosted a small dinner party to celebrate his firm landing a promising new client. I was determined to bury the hatchet with Elise, at least for one night. As we sipped wine before the meal, Elise fixed me with her trademark sneer. So, Marta, Dad tells me you used to run your own business before hitting it big in real estate. I tensed, thrown by the seeming non sequitur. Well, yes, I had a small marketing company years ago. That must have been quite the experience. Her eyes glinted with undisguised malice. Considering it went bankrupt amidst rumors of shady practices, the room fell deathly silent as the other guests froze. My cheeks burned with humiliation and shame over her dredging up that painful history. Edwin quickly tried to change the subject, but Elise plowed onwards mercilessly. They said you consistently misled clients over-promising results you couldn't deliver. Shady stuff. 
Tears of anguish pricked my eyes as old wounds ripped open. I opened my mouth, but no words came out. Leave it alone, Elise, Edwin said in a carefully measured tone, shooting her a warning look. But she ignored him, keeping her cruel gaze locked on my stricken face. I'm just curious, what drove you to be such a unethical businesswoman back then? Did the ends always justify the means for you? That did it. The floodgates burst open as years of pent-up hurt came pouring out. You smug, sanctimonious little brat! I exploded, shocking everyone with my outburst. You have no idea what you're talking about! Elise recoiled, her sneer faltering for the first time. But I was on a roll, unleashing a torrent of raw emotion. Maybe my business failed, but at least I took risks and worked for everything I have— what have you ever done besides being a spiteful, ungrateful leech on your father? Her face contorted with fury as she opened her mouth, but I cut her off. Save your vicious lies. I'm done walking on eggshells around your childish tantrums. I whirled towards the gaping guests. I'm so sorry, but I've lost my appetite. Grabbing my purse, I stormed out, leaving chaos in my wake. As I broke down in heaving sobs in the privacy of my car, one gut-wrenching truth became excruciatingly clear. Any hope of Elise and I achieving a real family bond was dead. She had crossed a line that could never be uncrossed. If she wanted a war, she had just gotten one. I would match her blow for blow until she learned her place. The gloves were officially off. After the disastrous dinner party, the atmosphere at home was more toxic than ever. Edwin kept trying to play peacemaker, but Elise and I were done pulling punches. You're going to have to choose sides eventually, Dad, she sneered one night over a frosty, silent meal. Whose life is more important, mine or your little wife's? Edwin looked pained, but remained infuriatingly neutral. Don't make me pick between my family, Elise. Can't we all just get along? Elise laughed derisively. Yeah, like that's possible with her around poisoning everything. I bit back the urge to slap that sneer off her smug face. Instead, I decided to take the gloves off in a different way, by hitting her where it would hurt most. Over the next few weeks, I discreetly started digging into Elise's life outside our home. What I uncovered sickened yet unsurprised me. Falsified transcripts, incidents of cheating and plagiarism, fake letters attesting to charitable work she'd never done. This perfect daughter was a fraud, plain and simple. No wonder she hated my presence. I represented a threat to her precious facade of virtue. Armed with my damning new intel, I calmly confronted her one afternoon. Your grades and extracurriculars seem embellished. She stiffened, those cold eyes burning into me. You're delusional. Everything's legitimate. I have proof that says otherwise. I ticked off each infraction evenly. Cheating. Plagiarism. Forgery. Forgery. Should I go on? For a split second, I saw a flicker of fear cross her face before the scornful mask slipped back on. You're bluffing. You don't have anything don't I? I pulled out a thick file detailing every lie, every deception. Want to tell your father the truth about his perfect princess? Elise's knuckles whitened as she clenched her fists, eyes blazing pure hatred. You're going to regret this, she hissed. Am I? I shrugged nonchalantly. Your move? The next day, she made her next move all right, but it backfired spectacularly. While I was in the backyard, a heavy flower pot came crashing down from the second story just feet away from me. Edwin came running, panic etched across his face. What happened? Ask your darling Elise, I spat, shaken from the near miss but keeping my cool. She just tried to crush my skull. Elise stormed outside, face flushed with rage. You're lying. It was an accident. I crossed my arms, unmoved. Save your lies. We both know you wanted me seriously hurt. Father and daughter faced off in stony silence before Elise finally caved under our scrutiny. So what if I did? she snarled, voice dripping venom. You're a psycho who deserves worse. My heart broke seeing the look of devastated betrayal on Edwin's face. This was his baby girl talking. What had caused her to evolve into such a twisted, vindictive shell? For the first time since entering this nightmare, a tiny flicker of pity sparked within me for Elise. Whatever hurts lay beneath, whatever demons drove her, they ran deeper than I could fathom. But that small pity was quickly extinguished, as I realized with chilling certainty that there was no reaching her, no voice of reason that could penetrate her toxic darkness. Our war had finally entered the realm of life and death, and in that merciless realm, I vowed to be the last one standing.
no matter how destructive the fallout. I was done being a victim to Elise's depravity. In the days following Elise's flowerpot attack, the war between us escalated to dizzying heights. I started compiling an airtight dossier of every despicable act, every lie she'd ever committed, forged letters of recommendation, plagiarized essays, caught cheating on exams. Not one instance of academic misconduct was left out as I methodically built an undeniable case against her. Elise remained frighteningly brazen, shooting me contemptuous looks, but staying uncharacteristically silent. For now. Edwin, meanwhile, was a hollow shell of himself, the life gradually beaten out by the trauma of seeing his once angelic daughter's true nature unveiled. I ached for him, but my pity was overshadowed by pragmatic resolve. I had to protect what was mine, my husband, my home, my life, that she was so hell-bent on destroying. If that meant ruthlessly dismantling her veneer of lies, so be it. One evening, Elise finally emerged from her sullen silence over a tense dinner. I saw the real estate analyst you hired poking around, she said with a cruel smirk. Digging up more dirt on me? I gave a serene smile. Just covering all my bases. You're wasting your time, she stabbed a fork into her plate. Dad would never believe your lies over his own flesh and blood. We'll see about that. I replied coolly. The truth has a way of coming out. Her nostrils flared, but I remained unruffled, taking a pointed sip of wine. Let her fume all she wanted, it would be the last of her blustering bravado, because later that night the final stroke was put into motion. While Elise was out with friends, I neatly compiled all the damning evidence and sensitive personal documents into an envelope for Edwin. No more soft peddling, no more appeasing the demon child. It was time he saw with crystalline clarity the despicable lies his daughter had perpetuated. When she finally stomped home well past curfew, I was waiting in the living room, envelope in hand. You're out pretty late, I remarked mildly. Fun night? Elise sneered. Don't pretend you care about my life. On the contrary. I held up the plump envelope, watching her face pale. I care very much about the truth coming to light. She opened her mouth, but no words came out as stark realization dawned. Your father's waiting to finally see the real you, I said softly, letting the implication hang in the air. For once, she seemed at a complete loss. No retort, no bravado to deflect the killing blow I'd been sharpening over these torturous months. The games end tonight, Elise, I stated with finality. Your move. And with that, I brushed past her up the stairs to face the inevitable reckoning with Edwin head-on, ready to watch her world of lies crumble into dust. No more holding back. No more mercy. Tonight, I would have my victory, one way or another. I steeled myself as I entered Edwin's study, the damning envelope clutched tightly. He looked up, his face etched with weary resignation. What's this about, Marta? Taking a deep breath, I laid it all out for him. The forgeries, the plagiarism, the utter disregard for ethics and basic human decency. As the evidence mounted, his expression morphed from skepticism to stunned disbelief. This, this can't be, he stammered, hands trembling as he pored over the documents. I'm sorry, Edwin, I said, my voice softening slightly. But it's all true. Elise has been lying to us from the start. The heavy thud of footsteps preceded Elise's furious arrival. Don't listen to her, Dad, she cried, panic cracking her usually cool veneer. It's all lies. Edwin slowly turned to face his daughter, anguish and hope warring across his features. Please, baby, tell me this isn't real. For a suspended moment, I actually thought I saw a flicker of doubt, of regret in Elise's eyes a chance for her to come clean and atone. But like every other opportunity, it was vaporized by the narcissistic fury that ruled her soul. Oh, it's real, all right. She spat with blistering contempt. Every last word of her twisted little stories. You want to know why, Dad? Because that psycho bitch has been out to destroy me from day one. White-hot rage contorted her delicate features into an unrecognizable mask of hatred as she turned her venom on me. I saw you for what you are the moment we met, a pathetic, insecure fraud trying to buy her way into our family. Edwin made a strangled noise, as if struck by the cruel, verbal blows. But Elise was far from done, the floodgates of long-simmering resentments finally bursting open. You think paying for my tuition earned you a place here? You were nothing but Dad's glorified sugar baby until I came along and exposed you for the lying snake you are. I opened my mouth, but she barreled onward in a fever pitch. 
all you've done is poison everything with your evil mind games. Well, congratulations, Daddy's latest whore. You finally turned him against his own flesh and blood. Edwin looked like he'd been shot, crumpling into his chair in a daze of devastated heartbreak. Finally, blessedly, Elise seemed to run out of vicious steam, her chest heaving. An oppressive silence swallowed the room as the shockwaves of her hate-laced tirade faded. Then Edwin raised his head and fixed his only child with a look of cold, hard resolution. "'Get out!' he said in a toneless rasp. "'I don't want to look at you right now.' Elise actually flinched like she'd been slapped. "'What?' "'You heard me,' he stated with quiet steel, more emotion in those two words than a thousand screams. "'Get out!' Whatever fleeting sympathy I'd felt for Elise in that moment vanished as the sheer extent of her maliciousness, her irredeemable depravity, crystallized before my eyes. This was no wounded, conflicted teenager acting out. This was a diabolical force of hate and selfishness that could never be reasoned with, never be redeemed, only cut out like the cancer it was before it metastasized. As Elise stormed out in a haze of fury and denial, it was like a crushing weight lifted from my shoulders. At long last, the storm had broken. Now, only the reckoning remained. The aftermath of Elise's volcanic outburst was like the eerie calm after a devastating storm. Edwin and I sat in numb silence, the weight of her hatred still suffocating the room. Finally, he spoke in a hoarse whisper. All those years, how could I have been so blind? I wanted to offer some reassurance, but what could I possibly say? The truth was a bitter pill. His beloved daughter was a master deceiver who had played him like a violin, Elise eventually slunk back, eyes still blazing defiance. "'You're really going to take her lies over your own child?' she spat. Edwin slowly rose, a broken man, but one who had glimpsed the unvarnished truth at last. "'Those weren't lies, Elise. They were facts you can no longer deny.' She opened her mouth, grasping for another retort, but he raised a weary hand. "'Enough. I—I I can't even look at you right now.' What are you saying? Her voice quavered for the first time. I'm saying that until you take responsibility for your actions, I want you out of this house. The words seemed to drain him of his last reserves. Elise actually rocked back on her heels, stunned. You're kicking me out? You're an adult now, Edwin stated flatly. If you want to embrace being a liar and cheat, you can do it elsewhere. A snarl twisted her lips as the transgressor's mask slipped back on. Fine, I never wanted to be part of this screwed-up family anyway. As she turned to storm off, no doubt plotting her revenge, I finally couldn't resist one last parting shot. That's right, Elise. Run along like you always do when confronted with the consequences of your cruelty. Clearly Mom's training paid off spectacularly. She froze, then whirled with a look of such smoldering hatred it actually sent a chill down my spine. Don't you dare bring my mother into this, she hissed in a low, dangerous tone. I simply gave her a level look. Why, ashamed of the miserable witch who warped you into her own poisonous image? Her hands clenched into trembling fists as she drew a shuddering breath, visibly fighting for control. At least she was flesh and blood, Elise finally spat, not some desperate soulless lesion like you'll always be. With that Zaprusky strike, she whirled and stormed out, leaving me reeling from the verbal blast radius. As the full sting of her parting insult lanced through me, I had to fight back the gut punch of shame and heard it triggered. For all my tough posturing, her cruel talent for cutting me where it hurt most remained as sharp as ever. But this time, it would be the last time. Because in finally unleashing the harsh consequences her behavior deserved, a line had been irrevocably crossed. There would be no makeup, no forgiveness tour. My war with Elise was over. I had cut her toxicity out of my life forever, even if her final strikes still found their mark. The weeks after kicking Elise out were some of the darkest of my life. Our once happy home felt haunted by the specter of betrayal and toxic vitriol we'd endured. Edwin was a shell of himself, plagued by waves of guilt for being so blind to his own daughter's malignant nature for so long. I did my best to comfort him. But his anguish constantly reopened the wounds Elise had carved into our family. How could I have failed her so utterly as a father? He'd lament, tears in his eyes. What did I do to make her that, that hateful? All I could do was hold him, knowing there were no easy answers. Elise's hatred seemed to have taken root long before I arrived, her cruel depravity already metastasizing unchecked. 
our arrival had simply been the catalyst that ignited her worst impulses in an effort to destroy what she couldn't control. As the weeks dragged into months with no word from Elise, a tense unease gripped me. Was this just the warped calm before her inevitable counterattack? A part of me remained on edge, wondering when and how she'd strike back in retaliation. But that vigilance gradually faded as the weeks became months of blissful silence. Then, one sunny April morning, the doorbell rang. I tensed automatically until Edwin called out in shock. Marta? It's Elise. My heart pounded as I rounded the corner to indeed find Elise on our doorstep, looking haggard and humbled. She avoided my gaze as a heavy silence stretched between us all. Finally, she spoke in a low, gravelly tone. I... I hit rock bottom. Lost my job. Got kicked out of my place. She swallowed hard, the very act of vulnerability seemingly agonizing for her. I have nowhere else to go. Tears sprang to Edwin's eyes as he reached out a trembling hand. Oh, sweetheart. Elise flinched like she'd been struck. Dad, please... Don't. I don't deserve your sympathy after. Her voice cracked with a rawness I'd never heard from her. After everything. An endless, weighty pause consumed the air before she almost inaudibly uttered two words that stopped my heart. I'm sorry. Another deafening silence as we both processed the impossible. Elise was finally facing the consequences of her malice and depravity with something resembling accountability. Then, to my utter astonishment, she turned her hollow gaze towards me. Marta? I have put you through hell with my behavior, my anger, my cruel words, none of it was justified. I could only stare in shock as she squared her shoulders, almost violently forcing out the words. You were right to cut me off, maybe by feeling what it's like to truly hit bottom. She trailed off, a muscle twitching in her jaw, before rallying once more. I just hope I can begin trying to make amends. If, if you'll give me the chance— my breath caught in my throat as years of torment and suffering crashed together in a maelstrom of conflicting emotion. This was the reptilian brain's ultimate test. Flee the source of trauma, or risk opening myself to further torment by extending an olive branch. As I met Edwin's fragile, pleading look, I realized only one path could even begin to heal our fractured family. Exhaling deeply, I finally spoke in a voice considerably calmer than I felt. Come inside, Elise. We have a lot to talk about. 